Here's a story every parent should pay attention to. An alarming new study finds that lead exposure is still a huge problem among children in the U.S. Between 2018 and 2020, Quest Diagnostics tested more than one million children for lead in their blood. All were under the age of six. Incredibly, about half had detectable amounts of lead in their blood. That's nearly 600,000 children. And get this, kids in the poorest areas of the country were nearly two and a half times more likely to have lead in their blood. Dr. John LaPook is joining us right now. Good morning. So what does lead exposure, what does that mean? What type of impact does that have on children? Well, lead is a toxin, especially to the neurological system. So think about it, you have these developing brains, especially in young kids, and it can affect learning, it can affect behavior, it can cause an increase in ADHD, and then all sorts of other problems, hearing problems, growth problems. Um, it really is a, is a bad thing, it's a toxin. And there's no cure. There's no cure for it. Once you have these effects, they're, they're really not reversible. You can give people remedial learning and things like that. And at very high levels, you can try to do chelation therapy to lower the levels in your blood. But no, once it happens, it's happened. Something Nate just said stuck out to me, that kids in the poorest areas of the country were nearly two and a half times more likely. Why is it, why is it more... Why do you see more of it in poor areas as opposed to more affluent sections? You know, one reason is is the legacy of lead in these areas. You know, the uh, lead in paint was not outlawed and not banned until like 1978. You have these old houses with chipped paint in there, and kids, especially when they're like one or two, they tend to put a lot of things in their mouth. Uh, it's in the soil, and it's also in lead pipes, as we found out in Flint, Michigan. All right, so as parents are watching right now, they're thinking to themselves, okay, what are things that I should look out for? What are the main sources of lead? Well, uh, right now, they're in probably the greatest source is in the lead, uh, in the chipped paint that's around. You know, we have this legacy of, of lead poisoning, and it's all over the place. And even though it was banned in 1978, it's still in these old houses, it's in lead pipes, it's in the soil, it's in all sorts of other places. And we really need to, you know, get, get our act together and try to remove it. But we can do something about this, right? A hundred percent. You know, we look at the statistics and it doesn't sound good. You, we, we all know how you can get it now. But can't we fix this? We can fix it. So, you know, first of all, I spoke to Dr. Harvey Kaufman of Quest Diagnostics. He was a co-author and they actually did the testing. And they found that uh, there was lead present in a little over 50 percent of the samples. Which uh, is astounding. It's astounding. Now, it's not a representative sample, but still, it's just too many people. And, yeah. you know, the, the good news is that the number of the amount of lead in our systems have come down dramatically, like more than 90 percent since lead in gasoline was removed and in paint over the past 40 years. But the fact that it's still present, even in small amounts, is not very good because there is no safe level. So what Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha told me last night, and remember, she's the star pediatrician yeah, from Flint, yeah. Michigan. Yeah, from Flint, Michigan. She exposed yeah. the whole thing. And she said, you know, she's practically giddy because they're down to the last few dozens of lead pipes that need to be removed. They know how to do something about it. They're teaching other places. They have remedial things in, the, uh, in place, and they have a registry that's following these kids. But she said, why do we have to use these kids as canaries in the coal mine? Mm. We know that it's out there. There's yeah, this course. legacy of lead. We know where it is, and we should go out and clean it up beforehand, do prevention rather than reacting to the kids later after they've already had it, and there's really not do much you, you can do. Do you think kids should be routinely tested? for lead even today in 2021? Well, right now, it used to be routinely tested, and the CDC stopped doing that about 1997 because uh, they said, oh, the numbers are coming down, and they didn't, I think, realize that even tiny amounts uh, are present, as shown in this study. So, so I do actually think that it should be routinely uh, measured at one and two, but as, uh, as Dr. Uh, Hannah Atisha said, why wait till then? We shouldn't use them as, oh, look at that, the levels are up, let's do something about it. We know it's out there, we know it's a problem, let's do something about it right now and there is legislation uh, right now pending uh, with the infrastructure bill to remove the lead pipes and that's Great. nobody knows how many there are maybe uh, 10 million there'll be there'll be billions of dollars to do that but what about dr phil landrigan who who revealed all this in the 70s he, yeah. he's a hero said to me last night also he said why not remove the paint chips too it costs yeah. billions of dollars but it's going to save many more than that John, thank you so much. Valuable information. Thanks. Now, if you want to see um, lead exposure, a tip sheet from Quest Diagnostics, go to our website, cbsmornings.com. It's also available in Spanish as well as English.